Alrighty, here we are. Week two of the college football season is here. Oh man, we got some we got some goodies this week. The AP poll came out Tuesday afternoon. It took a little while for it to come out though, but it came out. And the biggest change was Oregon completely dropping out of the top 25, so there's one less game to talk about. So we replaced it with another game that you need to be looking at this week. Uh, but we'll talk about that first, actually, because, you know, we got to talk about the FCS. Uh, expanding my coverage of the FCS, doing a little bit more FCS stuff this year. As, you know, I did, the, I did cover the playoffs last season. And uh, it was a resounding success. Tomorrow night, Thursday night, if you don't want to watch the NFL game or you want to have a split screen for that game, watch UT Martin, Missouri State. Biggest FCS game this week. There are a couple other games in the FCS that are of importance. But this is the only bright matchup between FCS teams. This is a playoff rematch from last year as well. As we all remember, you know, UT Martin and Missouri State went to war last season in the playoffs. And it's going to be a good one to watch. You know, Dresser win and the Skyhawks, they'll be taking on Jason Shelley and the Bears. Uh, the Bears, you know, it seems like their offense, you know, is going to have to find, you know, some some running game, you know, type things. You know, the Skyhawks were pretty good last year. Um, it seems like they've got a balanced attack. And, you know, this is going to be a fun one. You know, top 15 matchup in the FCS. Going to be a good one to watch alongside the NFL opener tomorrow night. Going to be watching, definitely. And then you get to the Saturday slate. The Saturday slate, why don't we talk about the other games first before we talk about the big ones. Uh, the other games, you know, that involve ranked teams that do not really matter as much. Uh, you got Charleston Southern taking on NC State. It should be easy for Devin Leary and Clue. You know, this ain't ECU. This is Charleston Southern. You know, so should be a lot easier. Ohio State's taking on Arkansas State. The question here is, will Jackson Smith and Jigba, will he even play? He did get banged up last week. We know Ohio State's defense is legit. So, uh, what, what's going to happen there? You know, what's going to happen? Southern Miss is taking on Miami, Mario Cristobal, Tyler Van Dyke, and the Hurricanes. Should be should be another beat em up for the Hurricanes. Southern Miss is a little bit tougher than Bethune Cookman, but this is still Southern Miss we're talking about here. Um, unless something stupid happens, you know, Miami should take care of business before they go on to Texas A&M. Southern Utah will take on Utah. Now, the Utes, they don't have to worry about the college football level right now. Don't even worry about it. You still have the opportunity to get there. You know, I know even I joked about it, you know, last week that, you know, hey, the Pac-12 might be out, but it's not over yet for the Pac-12. Not over yet. Still got some time. There's a whole season to go. All you got to do here get Southern Utah is take care of business. Notre Dame, they'll be taking on Marshall. And, you know, Marcus Freeman, he's got to get this crew on offense ready. Defense was solid, but this offense has to have some fight in them. They have to find more, you know, a couple, uh, a couple, you know, a couple, you know, you know, conservative plays. You know, they got they got to, they got to expand the offense a little bit. The tough tests are going to come sooner than you think for the Irish. App State taking on Texas A&M. You know, Haynes King, he's got to find some rhythm. It looked, it looked particularly great last week against Sam Houston. And with Anaya Smith, I think he can find some rhythm. You know, Smith had over 164 yards last week. Uh, we all know the Mountaineers gave up way too many points against the struggling Tar Heels team that could barely, you know, they were barely, like we're talking... North Carolina barely was able to hold off Florida A&M in the first half before, you know, eventually cruising in the second half. And then, you know, the game between App State and North Carolina last week was just completely bonkers. So, uh, App State's defense, it's, 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 it's not a good spot. That offense, 
They can go, but I don't know if they'll be able to go against Sex AM. I don't think they'll be able to do all that like they did in their game against North Carolina. So this should be a lot easier for AM. Just take care of business. Furman, they'll be taking on Clemson. You know, DJ Uilagale, he's got to find some comfort, you know, with the Clemson offense. You know, the whole offense has got to find some comfort. You know, the defense bails you out against Georgia Tech. You know, really, this team should not have scored 41 points last on Monday night against Georgia Tech. But, you know, that defense bailed them out and, put, and were able to help put that 41 up on the board. So, um, Clemson's offense has got to find something. So they were struggling. They were struggling against Georgia Tech last week. Uh, don't, don't, even, don't, even, don't even deny it, guys. They were struggling. Sanford and Georgia. Georgia is number two in the country. Yeah, I know people are complaining about Ohio State, you know, dropped to number three. But, I mean, it is what it is. And if it were me, uh, it really doesn't matter, you know, because I said Ohio State was one, Georgia was two, and then Alabama was three, right? I can't remember off the top of my head. You know, it, it, again, we're really in a race for number four here, you know. I, I know the CFP expanded and everything like that, but, I mean, do you really want to see – a race for 4 through 12, or you want to see a race for who's going to be number 4, who's going to be that lucky number 4. And, you know, Georgia right now, they're just too much. I'd say look for Malachi Starks at safety. Watch out for him. He should be all over the Bulldogs, who uh, uh, they actually got a big win. You know, Sanford did last week. Uh, they played Kennesaw State last week. He got a big win. Good for them. Michigan State taking on Akron. Uh, watch out for Jalen Berger instead. I know I said Jarek Broussard last week, but watch out for Jalen Berger instead. He had over 100 yards last week. You know, that might give Peyton Thorne a breather because, I mean, man, you know, this, 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 you know, uh, Sparty team is, uh, they're, they're, they're something else. They're different. It's different. It's a different team. It's a different breed of Sparty. Central Arkansas will take on Ole Miss. You know, Lane Kiffin's got to find a quarterback. He, he's also been dealing with some QB issues. Uh, Luke Altmaier will get the start over Jackson Dart, as apparently Jackson Dart didn't look too good last week. So, something's got to give. For Kent State, Oklahoma, the real winner is Kent State's wallet. Um, they've got three buddy games lined up. They already lost the first one. They're they have one more after Oklahoma. This should be too easy for Brett Venables, Dylan Gabriel, and the Sooners defense. They, they, they should take care of business here real quick. And then Hawaii, Michigan is the last of these games, you know, that really may or may not matter at the end of the day for the time being. It's J.J. McCarthy. He's going to get the start, remember. Uh... There, there, there shouldn't be too much trouble on the horizon yet for Harbaugh and company because it's Hawaii and Hawaii's defense has looked horrible these first couple weeks. So, uh, yeah, there you go with all that. As we get to the real stuff, the real nitty-gritty on Saturday, you know, first up is the nude slate and, you know, big nude. Big noon kickoff and college game day heading on over to Alabama and Texas. Alabama's the number one team in the country taking on those Texas law courts, my Texas law courts, some people in the comment section's Texas law courts, some people that liked and watched these videos, Texas law courts. And it, 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 it's not pretty. The spread ain't pretty. The way this game looks ain't pretty. This... Unless a miracle from God, you know, comes in, this is not going to be pretty. Yeah, this is a rematch of the national championship from over a decade ago. But this isn't the same Texas team from a decade or so ago. This is a Texas team that has looked, you know, not the same. This isn't the same. This isn't Texas football that you want to see. Like, this is a Texas team that went 5-7 and seven last year. Yeah, they have Quinn Ewers at quarterback. Yes, Steve Sarkeesian's got B. John Robinson, you know, lurking around in the backfield. 
He had a Horns defense, you know, could, you know, potentially cause a little bit of problems. But when you have Will Anderson on defense, we have that tied defense. We have the reigning defending Heisman Trophy winner Bryce Young, you know, carrying Nick Saban's offense. This this is this may be a massacre. This game might be over the first quarter, honestly. You know. Like again, unless there's some sort of miracle, some act from God that keeps this game closer than it needs to be, this this is this is not gonna be fun. This is not gonna be pretty. I'm sorry. As a Texas fan, I have to admit it. This is not gonna be fun. This is not gonna be pretty. Um, you know. There's, there's gonna there's gonna be some kind of there's a gnat that flew up in here I don't know why uh, as uh, I I just genuinely don't see it I don't see it you know the spread can say whatever it wants to say I I, I, I don't know like this is this is not gonna be fun I'll watch this game but I, I I'm not gonna like it I'm not gonna like the result one bit. I'll just tell y'all that right now. Again, I, I, I have nothing. I, I, I think we all know what's gonna happen with this game. The game you should be watching though is South Carolina, Arkansas in this time slot. You know, you know, sure, Alabama, Texas is hyped up, but you got KJ Jefferson and the Hogs with this defense taking on Spencer Rattler and the Cox. And, you know, Rattler's been having some problems already. You know, Mans threw two picks against Georgia State last week. Not Georgia Southern, Georgia State. Uh, he needs to calm that down. This is a good Hogs defense. They got a lot of transfers that, you know, were beating up on those poor Cincinnati O-linemen. Uh, you know, South Carolina's got to get it. They got to get something done. You know, this game has a spread that's a lot closer. So, if you want to watch a... A game that has a nicer spread to it, that has a little bit more ump to it. This is going to be a good one between South Carolina and Arkansas. And you have Wake Forest taking on Vanderbilt. The biggest news from this game is that Sam Hartman is cleared to play. Remember, Vandy is unbeaten though. But, uh, you know, Wake Forest has that momentum. They have that momentum on their side with Sam Hartman being cleared to play now. That should be big for them. Should be a big time game for the Demon Deacons. You know, as you know, they struggled a little bit last week against BMI. They gotta they they gotta play a full game this time around, and this is a big time opponent. Yeah, it's Vanderbilt, but it's still SEC school. You know, gotta get it done. In the afternoon, there's a couple of games, you know, that do need your attention. Tennessee is now ranked. He'll be taking on Pitt, Hendon Hooker, Jabari Small. This is a Vols offense that could go. And with Keaton Slovis and the Panthers, you know, you know, having to have to solve, you know, the O-line issues and, you know, some other things on offense. You know, yeah, Keaton Slovis threw for 305 yards last week, but it didn't feel like he threw for 305 yards at times. And like I said, you know, it did not feel like that West Virginia Pitt game was, you know, uh, it, it was good, but there were some kicks in there that were just not good, not fun to watch. You know, you know, between Slovis and Daniels throwing that ball the way they were throwing the ball at, uh, in that backyard brawl, some of those throws were not fun to watch. And you know, that's that's what the focus here is for Keaton Slovis. He's got to improve. You know, some of these throws. I mean, Vance could throw for 500 yards last week. Instead, he only threw for 305. That that's that, that's really what I'm trying to say here. Is that like there were some throws last week that should have been made that did not get made, and with the balls, you know, having a potent offense. We're talking Josh Heupel finally seemingly having a offense that can keep it going. You know, we'll see what this game means. This is a rematch from the game from last year, a home and home series. And yeah, I don't remember watching the game last year, but I do remember it being fun. And that's that's the takeaway from it. Washington State will take on Wisconsin in a game that I don't even know why this is a game. As, you know, Graham Burtz, you know, I questioned him at quarterback. I questioned Wisconsin quarterbacks constantly. But, I mean, you got Braylon Allen in the backfield looking to run all over Wazoo. 
And I do believe, who the hell's Washington State's quarterback? Is it Cam Ward? I think it's Cam Ward that's Washington State's quarterback. But in any case, Jake Dickert, he's the coach now at Washington State. He's got to have a plan to take down Wisconsin. I know the spread for this game is like super high in favor of Wisconsin. Maybe it could be closer. Who knows? But, I mean, at, at the time of this recording, it's like a 17-point spread. I, 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 don't, I don't see it. I don't, I don't see me watching this game for very long. I'll tell you that much. But do watch this next one, Houston, Texas Tech. It's going to be an old Southwest Conference showdown between Clayton Toon, the Cougs, and the Red Raiders led by Donovan Smith. It's going to be one hell of a game. Watch this game. Commit to this game. It's going to be fun. Cannot wait to, you know, watch this one. This is going to be a big one for the Cougars as, you know, they're in prime position as the team, the only group of five team that's ranked right now as Cincinnati dropped out too. And, uh, yeah, this one's going to be fun. Can Houston pull it off? You know, they had to go on the road. It gets UTSA last week, and they gotta they gotta keep it going. They gotta keep the train going against the Red Raiders. In the evening, you got a trio of games. You know, two of them are more interesting than the other one, but the, all three of them are interesting. You have a right Kentucky Florida matchup now, as it's gonna be a dog fight between Anthony Richardson for the Gators and Will Levis for the Wildcats. Um, the difference maker here lies with Chris Rodriguez Jr. I forget, I did not realize he was even suspended. I my apologies. Kentucky's got to get the the running backs that are left going against this Florida defense. And I mean Florida's defense, they they look good. They looked damn good against Utah last week. They they this is gonna be fun. I'd say keep my eyes on this game. Arizona State, Oklahoma State, it's another game to keep your eyes on. As Herb Edwards, you know, those fighting Herb Edwards and the Sun Devils. Emory Jones is the quarterback. So Xavier Balladay, he's at running back. And, I mean, Arizona State, you know, this, this one could be interesting. But the way the Cowboys' defense has been, you know, so far in just one game against Central Michigan, in which Central Michigan scored 44 points, you gotta feel you gotta feel a little bit better if you're Arizona State. You gotta feel a little bit better. Herb Edwards has got to get it going this year. That that's all I'll say. Cause I mean, Bands had some talent. We know Arizona State, you know, can have that potential to be a team that can do some damage. But again, they're in the Pac-12, and you know the Pac-12 is a gauntlet. This is a big test for the Sun Devils. And for Oklahoma State, they cannot blow this opportunity. They have to win this game. They have to win it, you know, in a lot better fashion than what they did against Central Michigan. They have to, do, they have to do a lot better, you know. Scoring 58 points is one thing, but you got to have a defense to do it. USC and Stanford. This is another big one. As Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams, that transfer star-studded. Trojans team, they have a real test now against Tanner McKee and the Cardinal. Now, USC Stanford has always been, you know, pretty interesting for the last 15 years or so, going back to 07, really. You know, you know, that we all remember that crazy game from 07. Yeah. It's been a crazy series the past two decades. So, we'll see if USC can keep it going because, you know, a lot of people are saying that USC is the last hope for the Pac-12. It, it, uh, I mean, I, I, I cannot tell you if it is or not for USC. They, they got to run through the table in the Pac-12, and it's going to be hard. And starting with Stanford, you know, Stanford's always a tricky opponent to play against, so it's not going to be easy. Not going to be easy at all. So, you know... The number 10 ranking, it's fine for USC, but they got to earn it. And this is a big opportunity for them. They got to earn it. The real game of the week is Baylor, BYU. The biggest game of the week. Honestly, if you're not watching this game, I don't know what's wrong with you. 
no reason to pull up that Pac-12 after dark nonsense. Watch this one. Watch this game. Baylor has Blake Shapin, Monterey Baldwin, you know, a, a nice offense, you know, with a lot of running backs in the backfield against Jared Hall, Kalani Satake, a, a BYU team that returns a lot of guys. This one is going to be a thriller. I mean, BYU is technically favored in this game from what I've seen so far. I've seen a couple of spread lines that say BYU is favored by like three and a half. And for Baylor, you know, for Baylor, this, this is a big one. This is a big game for them. But for BYU, this is even bigger. This will shape BYU's season. Because BYU has test after test after test coming up throughout the season. Notre Dame, Arkansas. You know, just two examples. You know, this is a huge, huge game, a top 20 matchup. And, you know, Baylor can't afford to lose. BYU can't afford to lose. Who loses is anyone's guess. But I'm telling you, it's going to be fun recapping this game at like 2 in the morning. I'll tell you that much right now. It's going to be fun recapping this game at like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. I'll tell you that much right now. Put 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 everything you need to on this game. It's gonna be a big one. So there you have it. Uh, five biggest five biggest games aside from the UT Martin Missouri State game, Alabama Texas of course, Tennessee Pitt, Kentucky Florida, USC Stanford and Baylor BYU. Those are my other five biggest games along with the UT Martin Missouri State game. So there you go. There's my top six games of the week right there. And with all that being said. I'm going to get all that out of here and skedaddle. We got some NFL stuff coming for you. Oh, yes. NFL Week 1. The preview is coming right out in a jiffy. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care. And have a good rest of your night.